So as some of you guys may already know, I always use the 2870 from Sigma and the 16 to 28 sort of acts as the brother to that lens in the sense that they share the same sort of design and form factor. And of course, they sort of pick up from the same place. So the 16 to 28 will take you to 28 millimeters and then you can just switch over to the Sigma 2870 and then sort of have a range between 16 and 70 millimeters that is all constant 2.8 aperture, which is really nice. And considering that it's such a small size and form factor, it makes a little package of those two lenses really great. So that was sort of my first thought about it. It was actually really nice having just two lenses in my bag, the 16 28 and the 2870. And if I'm being completely honest with you guys, I reckon I could do 99.9% .9 of my shoots just with those two lenses. And even though the form factor is very similar between the two lenses, there is one glaring difference that actually caught me out quite a lot, and that is actually the filter thread size on the 16 to 28. So the 2870 has a 67 millimeter filter thread size, um, which is the exact same filter thread size as all of the 1.8 primes from Panasonic. So I'm very used to adapting 67 millimeters up to 77 or 82 even for my filters, but I'm not used to adapting 72 up to 77 or 82. So it caught me out a little bit and I did actually have to go out and buy a step up ring. So it's a little bit annoying. I sort of do wish that they could have just made the filter thread the exact same on both lenses. But again, this is a very, very small nitpick. And while I'm on the topic of nitpicks, I might as well just get them all out of the way. Um, and the only other nitpick that I could find aside from that filter thread size in the front um, was when you are at 16 millimeters and hand holding it for let's say vlogging stuff. Um, I did notice that the corners do wobble quite a lot and in fact I said it's probably more than the S Pro 16 to 35. Um, so that's definitely something to keep in mind if you were planning on picking this up for you know let's say vlogging and handheld use a lot. Um, of course for photography it's absolutely fun and for video at 60 millimeters as long as you're not doing too much moving the wobbling won't be too bad um, but I would recommend putting this camera on a gimbal if you did want to shoot at 16 millimeters uh, for video. Um, that being said it's probably something to do with the Iber system sort of battling it out with that wide angle lens as such. So I'm sure with a few settings which can make it look a bit better. But yeah, that's something that I noticed and it's definitely something to make a note of if you are planning to pick this one up. And then circling back around to the image quality of this lens, I mean, of course, it's produced by Sigma, so therefore you're gonna get a lot of micro contrast, great sharpness, and great color rendition throughout. Um, it's a great lens for both stills and video, um, and it's just very clinical, very sharp, and it's just a pleasing lens to use. So that's why, for me, personally, they work fantastically with the S5 II, the S5 IIx, and all the other Elmont cameras that I have, because I shoot corporate content, that's what I do day in and day out. So having a lens that can produce very sharp and very pleasing images out of the bat is of course very good for me. The autofocus performance of this lens as well is really good for both stills and for video if you do have the new PDAF uh, Panasonic cameras. Of course I've got the S5 II and the S5 IIx so I was testing it out um, using the new phase detect autofocus system and it focuses very very smoothly, it's very snappy and to be honest it behaves very similarly to a native Panasonic lens. Um, again I've said this a few times in other videos but I'll say it again once more and that is if you've ever been put off buying a single lens uh, due to the bad autofocus performance on Panasonic cameras. Um, if you have the S5 II or the S5 IIx, uh, then the autofocus issues disappear completely. Uh, the phase detect autofocus system works fantastic with the Sigma lenses, so you will have nothing to worry about. And that's exactly the sort of experience I got when I was using this lens with my S5 II and my S5 IIx. So price-wise, this lens will set you back around £749 here in the UK, and I'll also put the price up for dollars as well. So if your budget is under $1,000 or pounds and you you want to buy a wide angle zoom lens then realistically there's nothing else on the market currently that actually competes uh, with a 16 to 28 for the L mount. Of course we had the 6 to 35 f4 but that's above a thousand dollars or pounds and then we had the 18 millimeter f1.8 which is actually one of my favorite all-time favorite lenses but of course that's a prime lens so you're only stuck with 18 millimeters um, so this really is the only lens of its type in this price category therefore making it pretty much untouchable and that's why ultimately I would recommend this lens as it stands. Uh, I had a great time using it. I think it's a fantastically, you know, sharp and very, very good lens for professional work. Um, so if you are on the fence about buying it, then you shouldn't be, you know, it does the job. It's a Sigma lens and all Sigma lenses generally tend to be very good quality. I've mentioned the Sigma 2870 f2.8 a lot in this video, and that's because it's probably one of my favorite and most used lenses. So therefore, if you did actually want to learn a little bit more about that lens in particular, then you should definitely go and check out this video next.